Back to the lead, the political universe fighting over the most coveted appointment in the United States, a Supreme Court seat. Justice Antonin Scalia's unexpected passing has now shoved the court into the middle of the 2016 election and put the spotlight back on the most bitter and broken relationship in the country, the president's relationship with congressional Republicans. Joining me now to talk about the coming nomination fight, one of them, Chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Republican Congressman from Virginia, Bob Goodlock. Congressman, thank you for joining us today. Good to be with you, Jim. So, a few things to talk about here uh, in, in related to the Supreme Court. To prevent a floor vote on this nomination, you would have to have uh, Senators Grassley and McConnell hold out for a year, in effect, um, and have a, have a vacancy on the court for, for longer than a year. Now, there are conservative Republicans who say that, that congressional Republicans have given in in the past, that, that, that they've broken ranks. Do you see, do you think that the Republican Party on the Hill has the has the backbone to, to stand firm on this, not allow a vote? Well, first of all, Jim, it's highly unusual to have a Supreme Court confirmation in a presidential election year. So I side with those who believe that this is an excellent addition to the great debate uh, about what uh, uh, the next Supreme Court justice uh, should stand for, and therefore, including that in the presidential election, I think is far better than letting a lame duck president uh, make a nomination that is going to clearly tilt the court. Uh, in a direction away from where Justice Scalia, who is a lion of the court uh, for 30 years, a strong advocate for originalism, for uh, limiting the role of the court in terms of judicial activism. And so I, I, I don't think you'll see that happen. But, but the last time it happened was 1940, by the way. But then, as in almost every other presidential uh, year uh, nomination, the um, uh, justice uh, was appointed and then confirmed by a party of the same party as the president. Right. Where you have a divided party, this is uh, unheard of. Well, let me ask you, can, can Senate Republicans hold out this long, in effect? Well, I think if they make it very clear that the people of the country should be making this decision through the presidential election process, then I think they will not only uh, be able to uh, let me just... uh, hold out, as you put it, but go through the process in a way that makes it very clear that they think that ultimately this decision... Can I play devil's advocate just on that point? Sure. I mean, didn't the people of the country already voice support by electing the president twice? Sure. I know it's late in his term, but, but it's, it's not like he came out of nowhere, right? <laughs> it's, it's very late in his term, mm -hmm. and I think that given the stakes and given the uh, clear direction that we've heard from a number of Republican senators already, I think that what we're going to see is uh, this be a major issue in the presidential election no campaign. Question. Now, is there, there, there have been some names floated of relatively moderate judges that were approved by Republicans on the Hill, often unanimously. Sri Srinivasan is, is a name uh, that's been, been thrown out there. Uh, do you think that there is a Goldilocks, as it were, candidate, a nominee that the president could make that could attract Republican support? Well, when you get late in a presidential term, I mean, I think it's already clear that circuit court judges, that uh, vacancies that come up, they're not likely to be filled until a new president is selected as well. But when you're talking about the fifth vote uh, in a 4-4 split court now, uh, I think it's highly unlikely that uh, this is going to go by the boards with a candidate. However, having said that, I'm sure that uh, uh, the Senate will want to see who the president nominates and, and consider that. He, he could surprise all of us, but I, I would be very well, surprised. Sounds like you have an open mind there. To, to, yeah, I, would to be very I would be very surprised if he nominated somebody that I, and, I, and the House doesn't get any say in this, by the way, but I or any of these senators would find to be a, 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 an effective uh, replacement for Justice Scalia. Final question. Are you worried at all uh, about a backlash from voters for... Uh, Republican lawmakers just not, not even allowing a vote on this and keeping uh, a seat in the highest court empty for really more than a year because you're getting into the, the next presidency and the process that it would take for the next president to pick someone and vote. Well, there's a process for handling cases. If, if the case uh, is um, uh, a 4 4 split, mm -hmm. and goes by the way, many cases will, will not be a 4 4 split, but if it is a 4 4 split, then the holding in the circuit court below will be upheld. Uh, if uh, uh, it's a 4-4 split and, uh, you know, Justice Scalia might have overturned that with the fifth vote, uh, that's going to be upheld as well. And the justices also have a mechanism to delay consideration of cases until the next term of the Supreme Court in which there would still be time for a new president to uh, appoint and get confirmed by the Senate uh, a new justice okay. that could take care of some of the toughest cases. Congressman Goodlatte, thanks for walking us through this. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate having you on.